Okay, so we're back to looking at this ontological proof. So now we want to look at the next theorem. This is theorem 2 here. I think it might be called theorem 3 on the Wikipedia thing. So g of x implies that g is central x, or that if x satisfies the godlike property, then, oh, here it is. If x is a godlike being, then the property of being godlike is the essence of x. So we might have to look at the definition of the essence of x. So we have here that if something is the essence of x, then first of all, that x has to satisfy whatever that property is. So, and every other property that x satisfies must must have sort of been some necessarily where necessarily necessarily come from the essential property. Okay, let's do this. Here. So, phi is an essence of x if and only if phi is a property of x, and every property psi that x has is strictly implied by phi. So it's some sort of essential property. Well, phi is the essence. If phi applies to x, and for everything else that applies to x. So there is, it's necessarily true that that thing is implied by the essence thing when evaluated every y. Okay. Okay, so we want to show that if God X is godlike, then then the godlike property is essential, is an essence of X. Okay. So to prove an implication, you assume that this is true, and then you want to prove this is true. Okay, so see how in the proof of the assumption is g of x is true, and we want to assume, um, so let psi be an arbitrary property, and x satisfies psi. So the reason that's assumed, I suppose, is because in the definition of essential, If you want to show that something is an essential property of x, um, well, we already have this part because we assume that g of x is satisfied. So we need to show this part. Okay. And if you want to show some for all thing, well, the way to do it is you let start with an arbitrary sign. Okay. Start with an arbitrary sign. Okay, and then you want to prove an implication. So then you assume the implication, the assumption is true, so psi of x. Okay, and then you want to show now that it's necessarily true that for any y, g of g of y implies psi of y. Okay. So we got this bit, and then we want necessarily the case that for any y um, g of y implies psi of y. So that's the same as this, okay, because once you have the for all here, it doesn't matter what letter you put there. It's just, um, it, it, it's, I guess it's called a dummy variable. So that if you could show this as the conclusion, then that proves that g is the essence of x. So that's how the proof would end. Um, okay, so so what do we do first? We assume that okay, so we want to show that psi is positive. Okay, because I guess 
um, godlike properties deals well with positive properties. Okay. So okay, so to show it's not so it's positive, we, we argue by contradiction. So assume it's not positive. Okay. So remember axiom one says that the not symbol can basically go inside. The not symbol is on the outside can basically go on the inside. Okay. So that goes on the inside. And what happens when it goes on the inside? Well, now something is a positive property now, right? So the negation of psi is positive. That's what that means when it's on the inside. Now, if something is positive, then the godlike property does something well with that. So, let's have a look. so the definition of godlike is that any time a property is positive, then x satisfies that property. See, so if we go back. So now we're saying the negation of psi is positive. So, so that means x satisfies the negation of psi. Okay. So next, see how? So that's the negation of psi at, at x, and so that's a contradiction because something in its negation cannot both be true. Okay. So that contradiction means that the assumption was false. So the assumption was not positive. Psi is not positive. So therefore psi is positive. Okay. Well if psi is positive, okay, so there's another axiom that says anything that's positive is necessarily positive. Okay. So and that's how we end up over here. And then I guess that's the star. I don't really understand the star, but I guess it may be trying to label to label the claim that psi is negative, necessarily positive. That claim is labeled star. Okay. So it holds that for it's necessarily true that psi being positive implies that for all x g of x implies psi of x. Um, why is that true? So it's because of d1 and neck. Um, d1 is the definition of godlike. So Again, any time a property is positive, psi satisfies that property. So we know that being godlike is a positive property. No, no, no. So for all x. For all x, g of x implies psi of x. Um, see. For all x. Okay, I'm starting to suspect that this is some sort of um okay, so this this X is confusing because it's it's a different X to that one. Um for all x, x being godlike implies that psi of x is true. So I guess psi is positive with, with, whether it has anything to do with x or not. Okay, so psi is just the property and it's positive. 
so if it's positive, okay, then anytime a property is positive and if any time the property is positive that property satisfies some godlike thing or if something's a godlike thing and a property is positive then that thing also satisfies the property so that's so that's that part so assuming that x is godlike so this should be y maybe y to make it clearer y is godlike and because psi is positive then psi of y is true okay so if this was y this would be less more clear yeah because anytime something's godlike being positive will be satisfied a positive property. A godlike thing satisfy every positive property. Okay. So that's just a true thing on its own. Okay. And this is a true thing on its own. Because we just established that. So true does imply tr true implies true is true. Okay. And I guess that's just a tautology in some way. Uh, yeah, so this necessitation, I suppose, is when you have this kind of true statement and you just put in, it's necessarily true in front of, okay. Is this, is this, okay, what's D1? D1 is the definition of God, okay, so that's how this becomes true. Okay. And then with dist, which is, I guess, distributivity, see, basically, you just put the necessitation, necessary symbol on each of the arguments. You put it on the first thing, implies the second thing. So whenever you have sort of alpha implies beta, and then a necessary symbol outside of it, that implies. Necessarily alpha implies necessarily alpha, uh, beta. So it distributes the brackets here. Okay. And that's because, well, how would you sort of, one way to sort of think about it? Well, maybe it's easier to just think of it like this. So you're assuming necess so with the brackets, it's true for alpha implies beta. So that means for all possible worlds, alpha implies beta okay okay you assume that and then you want to show that necessarily alpha as a thing implies necessarily beta as a thing so you assume that alpha is true in all possible worlds and then you let there be some arbitrary world and you want to show that beta is true okay but in that alpha arbitrary world that you just picked alpha implies beta is true and alpha is true okay by the assumptions that you just made so therefore beta is true as well so that's one way to think about why the distribution of this necessary symbol works and so then you get necessarily if psi is necessarily positive then it's necessarily true that for all x, x being godlike implies that x satisfies psi or has the property psi. Okay. So together with star, so now I guess we were saying that was star. So if the assumption of this implication holds, then the conclusion also holds. So that's what we get. And the conclusion of that is exactly this. Okay. For all x, <laughs> so is that the definition again?
Yeah. Maybe it would have been nicer if it was for all Y to make it a little bit clearer. Okay, so that that proves um, rather formally that if, if X is godlike, then the property of being godlike is in, is an essence of it's is the essence of X.